Hello everyone and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at World War II Autobot Hot Rod from the Transformers Studio Series. This is a deluxe class figure as featured in Transformers The Last Night. Um, I'm trying to remember if actually World War II Hot Rod was shown. I know they showed us like a World War II Bumblebee and we did already get that figure. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is just a repaint slash slight remold of the World War II Bumblebee. But I thought it looked pretty cool. I feel like it works a little bit better in these colors. And I like this gun as opposed to the weird hammer gun that Bumblebee got. So we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, overall packaging's pretty basic. Nice picture of Hot Rod here on this side. Over here, another picture of Hot Rod. Not too much going on in the top or bottom. So we'll go ahead, we'll get Hot Rod out of the box here, and we'll take a closer look. So here he is on the display stand, in that one scene, flashback scene in the last night, where uh, Bumblebee and I guess Hot Rod infiltrate the, I guess, Nazi stronghold. It's been a while since I've seen the movie, I'll be honest with you, but I kind of remember the scene where they show the Transformers back during World War II, and they were, I think they were infiltrating this like Nazi stronghold base. So there's the backdrop. Here he is, included with the figure. I always appreciate they do these, especially for the studio series. I think it makes sense. And, uh, yeah, there you go. He looks pretty good. Alright, so here is World War II Hot Rod out of the packaging. He looks cool. I think, um, the color scheme is good. Although it is a lot of just, like, gunmetal gray color. Um, not too much else going on. He does have a few pops of, like, this rust orange color, which I think looks good. And a little bit of silver as well. Uh, taking a look at the head sculpt, I really like the head sculpt. It's a little basic, but I like the green eyes and the silver and the orangey rust, rust color I think looks good. It's kind of funny because it's definitely a repurpose of that World War II Bumblebee mold, but I feel like that came out a while ago, so it's kind of weird that this guy is coming out now. I don't know. It's not bad. It's just kind of weird to me. Like, you would think they would have... I guess maybe they didn't want to put out two of the same mold so close together, but... Overall, he's fine. Uh, head is on a ball joint, so you can move that all around, up and down, side to side. Shoulders move. Uh, ball joint there. There is kind of a connection where, like, the shoulder joint is supposed to hook into the shoulder itself. Like, this right here is supposed to peg in right there it's tenuous at best <laughs> and when you move the arm around it likes to come undone it's not a huge problem because even when it's undone you can still move the arm around it just you know move, you can see how it moves around a little bit it's not the end of the world uh just a little annoying you have kind of a bicep swivel right above the elbow then you have 90 degrees in the elbow can you go back the other way no just 90 degrees uh the hands rotate into the forearm so because of that they don't have any wrist movement uh, you do have a little bit of swivel back and forth here in the waist, but because of the backpack and the leg kibble, it kind of... Well, I guess if you lift the backpack out of the way, you could move this around as much as you need to. Although you're seeing that this silver part's kind of hitting into that, so I wouldn't say you have like a full 180, but you don't need it. Uh, you do have a ball joint in the hip, then you have a thigh swivel underneath that. 90 degrees in the knee, no ankle tilt. You do kind of have a decent amount of kibble on the back of the calves, but what are you going to do? And then you kind of have a little bit of a monster backpack here as well. So from the back, he looks kind of clunky, but like I said, you can kind of move this out of the way if you need to move him around or really pose the legs or something, and then you can kind of just like push it back down to where you need it to be. So it is kind of clunky and in the way, but it's very easy to shift it out of your way temporarily if you're trying to get a pose. Uh, also, these things kind of act as heels, as you can see, but this does make him rather back heavy. So, even with the heels, he kind of has a tendency to want to fall backwards. He's just not very evenly distributed with his weight, so that's kind of a bummer. But overall, like I said, I do like him. I think the color scheme works. I would have just liked a little bit more of that orangey rust color just to kind of break up the gray. The silver works a little bit as well, but I feel like they could have put maybe down here, like on the on the kneecap or something, or maybe in the feet somewhere. Just a little bit more of that orange to kind of break up the color scheme. The torso and the arms are well done, but the legs are very gray. 
So the accessory is kind of neat, kind of a basic like chain gun accessory, just pegs into his hand very easily. So not too much to that, but I think it's cool. I like it. I think it's more successful than the weird like long gun slash hammer thing that the Bumblebee one came with. So I think it works in that respect. But uh, let's go ahead, we'll get into the transformation. So if you're familiar with the Bumblebee mold at all, I believe it transforms exactly the same way. It is very much a shell former. You're going to kind of lift this out of the way. Uh, you can rotate the hands into the forearms. For whatever reason, this one, well, it was doing it earlier. I was going to say, one of them clips in nicely, and then the other one kind of doesn't want to go in all the way on mine. But now it seems like both of them don't want to go in. Or I guess that is the full way because it does. Okay, maybe I'm just wrong. You can see that the plastic kind of comes around and hits. So I guess that is as far as it's supposed to go. Come on down to the legs. Uh, fold this part out like so. Flip up the foot. This part is going to pop out the wheel. And then this will drop back down like so. So do that again. Lift it up. Fold up the foot, pop out the wheel, drop this back down, and then you can peg the two legs together. You can see the clips right there. So make sure that's all clipped together. Make sure the legs tab together as well. Why is this not doing it? Uh, what am I doing here? What's going on? Why is this giving me the business? I don't know. It was just being weird. It's funny, I had no issue with it the first time I did it, so not really sure what that's about. Anyway, there you go. Front of the vehicle, tab together, and good. So, coming up to the top section here, you're going to kind of untab. I guess actually you'll want to flip out these wheels first to give yourself a little bit of room. It's a lot of clearance issues with this. Then you kind of untab the arms, and then this section will flip up, or does it go down? Now it goes down to hide the head inside, and then this will rotate around like so. So make sure that this is all the way down to hide that head. Come back here. This will, you'll see that there's kind of a double jointed hinge there, so this will collapse all the way down like that. So bring this all the way in. Fold the arms forward. They will go in like this. I wish these had somewhere to peg in. They don't. It looks like they almost kind of want to, like, if you see here, there's kind of a little peg and there's kind of like a screw hole and it almost looks like it's going to peg in there, but it's not really, like, deep enough to get that to peg in. So you kind of just rotate this in. Swivel the arm like that. Oh no, do you swivel? I think you swivel the arm in like this. If I'm not mistaken. You fold this in and get that in like that. So, you have kind of the shell of the car there. You're going to lift this up. And then this is just going to drop down over top of everything. And again, there's clearance issues. This piece will rotate down and form the back, which will kind of naturally pop this up. I think I have to fix the arms because they're not 100%, so let me go ahead and get that all lined up. Okay, so it's just a matter of kind of getting everything to line up. Those pieces drop down. There's a panel here that folds down, which you can peg into these uh, side pieces with the wheels that shores up the back. Once you do that, this will kind of click into place. And then the last step is the top, which you just flip 180, and then you fold down. And that gives you the vehicle mode. Bringing the gun back in, you have two options. You can kind of see how there is like a channel here on the side of it. You can lift this up and actually slide this into that little window and then close it back up. I kind of prefer that. I just think that looks cooler. But you can also take that back out, slide that out, and if you want to just peg it in on the top here, that's another option for you. But I think it looks much cooler to slide it in there. 
So it kind of has the same problems that the Bumblebee version of the mold had, where because it's a shell former, the panels don't 100% all stay lined up. And they have these really tiny little clips right here and right here. And I just feel like they're not 100% latching, but because they're kind of thin plastic and there's not a great place to like grab onto, it's kind of hard to push them on tighter. Uh, these connections, there's little tabs that come out of this back here that peg into the two side parts. I feel like that connection is pretty good. The panels here on the sides peg in decently. Um, the front stays together pretty well. And this doesn't seem to want to close. It's kind of funny. There feels like a lot of wasted space. Like these should be able to push down further, but they just, they can't. Which is kind of a waste. Um, so it's not a perfect mold, but I think, I think it's pretty good. I do think that it works better in this color scheme. Um, the green was fine, but I just think this darker gray that kind of bleeds into the black, I just think looks sharper, especially with the silver highlights. I think this weapon works better, especially the way it mounts into the vehicle. It rolls decently well. So I think it looks pretty cool. I definitely think I like this over the Bumblebee mold. Like it was neat to get Bumblebee in that kind of army green color uh, because he's always so yellow. So that was kind of neat. But I just think color scheme wise, accessory wise, uh, this mold works a little bit better in this color scheme with Hot Rod. So Hot Rod's not bad. If you already have the Bumblebee mold, you might not feel the need to double dip. And I completely understand that. It's exactly the same mold, just slightly uh, retooled and repainted. I do think this is the more successful color scheme. I do like the accessory for Hot Rod as well. So if you never picked up the Bumblebee one, I would say go ahead and pick this up. It's worth having one of the mold. Um, if you loved the first time, you know, go ahead and grab Hot Rod. I don't think you're going to regret getting both of them. Like, I certainly don't. But it's not an amazing mold that I was like, oh my god, I have to get another one. It's, it's an okay mold. It has its flaws. It's definitely a shell former. Um, it, like I said, it's not perfect, but there's not anything glaringly wrong with it. There's just a couple little things. It's a little finicky. I wish some of the panels lined up a little smoother. Um, but for the most part, it's pretty cool. I also wish he had kind of more defined heels, especially because he's so back heavy with all the big backpack of parts just kind of hanging off the back there. Um, the other thing I will point out, the artwork here has him with two guns and he only has one. I think he definitely would have been cool to have two guns. Um, you probably could have still put the second one on top in the vehicle mode, so it would have been cool to give him two. But I, I think he's overall, he's okay. He's not amazing, he didn't knock my socks off, but uh, <laughs> I definitely think it's a, it's a decent mold. And like I said, if you already have the Bumblebee and you're happy with that one, Maybe you skip this one. If you love the Bumblebee one, then go ahead and grab this. It's pretty pretty much the same thing, so you'll know what you'll be in for. Um, if you never grabbed the Bumblebee one, then I would say definitely grab this one. Because in my opinion, I think this is the better of the two. I think this mold works better in this color scheme. And I think the accessories here are better than the like weird gun hammer thing that Bumblebee came with. So... Yeah, that's going to do it for this one. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoy the video. And as always, thank you so much for watching.